Welcome back to another episode of TSP. Hello. I promise you guys that the intro will change this weekend. I'm home. I was alone. waiting to hear it, man. I was. I was waiting to hear it. I was so like, we're, trying, we're in. trying to rectify the dead space that's in there. I have a young lady that's going to talk through it. I just haven't had a chance to do it. Hey, man, yeah, cut me some slack. Two podcasts, a nonprofit, work full time. I cut, time, dude, I cut you wife, all kinds dog. of slack, dude. <laughs> I cut you all kinds of slack. Yeah. I am a slacker. No, so, you're not. Anyways, no, 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 no. I have turned into a slacker. <laughs> Why? Because I have got Commander-itis. I've got 32 more days left of me being commander of a post, and I'm so happy. I'm so yes. happy about that. Um. Yes. Do you have Short any announcements, timer. sir? Short timer. Um, so the only announcement I have is, well, besides, obviously, the golf outing, 9-11, uh, you know, it's still – in the process of coming together, there's four or five teams that are already signed up and paid a couple sponsors. Uh, it's going well. Um, I did a podcast myself last night with uh, Charlie over at single tree and uh, he got my l- little story and, and he uh, didn't ask me really. I'm like, it's a two part deal. I know, man. <laughs> Thanks Charlie. Thanks a lot, buddy. You're going to tell him you want to be next. That's okay. Hey, listen. Hey, there was hey. no room in a studio for two people anyway, so that's it was all right, a, man. It was a one-on-one thing, but uh, that went pretty well. I have no idea when that's going to air this weekend, next week. I have no idea, but uh, anyways, uh, you know, uh, if you've been following us here for the last three years, you know, we sit down with uh, veterans and get their life stories. Well, tonight we have special guest. We have a veteran, but uh, a veteran of the Israeli Air Force, I believe. Is that Woo-hoo! correct, guy? Yes. Yes, with this awesome. thing and this thing. And yeah, I, I was ready, you know, I was ready to open up, you know, a Dostoevsky novel waiting for you to finish uh, your kind of introduction. But I love it, you know, I yes. like it. So, uh, uh, Guy is in Israel right now, and it's like, what, one o'clock in the morning? So, yes, it's 110, 110 to be exact. Yeah. So the minutes, why, why the minutes don't change, you know, through time zone, you know, someone should uh, write an article about that. Maybe some uh, physicist. Um, I was always in- interested about a lot of, you know, different ideas, esoteric ideas, but uh, mainly uh, if, if you want to talk uh, and present me, uh, you can do that. But if you, if you don't, I can present myself. So whatever, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. All right. Yeah, we're just going to ask you some questions, and uh, you, we're just going to let you run oh, with it. Uh, uh, do you have anything first, Andrew? I, I was going to say something. Oh. I, I was going to say something. Yeah. Um, right. But no, thank you, Guy, for coming. Thank you, Fleek, for having me on again. Um, since I'm the the co-host here um, in the comic relief, <laughs> I just want to say um, we had a great turnout at our Memorial Day Ruck uh, last week. We've got a couple of things coming up. Um, I've just been asked to give a prayer and the speech at Flag Day, which is June 14th, the Army birthday, uh, down at Fort Negley. So you guys, if you're around, come down to Fort Negley and watch me talk about the flag and give a, a nice prayer um, for the Army and for the, for the actual the, for the flag. Where's Fort and Negley I, at? Fort Negley is in Nashville, Tennessee. We've oh, well. we've done this, God, for at least oh, – yeah. 15 years in a row and uh laurel bowman she uh reached out to me today a uh, vet links so thank you laurel um we've had her on the show before but she wrote me up and she's like hey do you want to do this again i was like yeah of course um i love doing the prayers for different things and i love being able to speak at different events hint hint <clears throat> charlie eblin um you <laughs> might want to you might want to talk to me i mean i've been in the murfreesboro magazine I've done this and this and this, and I'm a District 5 commander. And we put you on our VFW website for free, no charge. So, I don't know. Tip for tat, dude. Tip for tat. <laughs> uh, that's it for me, man. Oh, right on. Such a patriotic speech, yeah. Yes. Oh, wait. Actually, I do have one announcement. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay. You, you've been hell bent about this for a couple days now, Fleek. I'm not going to say anything that's going to get us in trouble. But for the, for you veterans out there, 
You guys get a DD-214 when you get out, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Do not wear it if you don't rate it. That's all I'm going to say, okay? It'll save you a lot of headache in the future. And some of you guys know what I'm talking about. If you don't rate it, don't wear it. If it yeah. doesn't fit on the DD-214, don't wear it. Yeah, you don't you don't have to embellish your service, man. You did something. You don't something. have to be a bro vet. You, you don't have to be you did, a bro you did, vet. You, you did something uh 99% of the population of the country didn't do. You should just be proud of that. Exactly. There's no reason there's no reason to uh, embellish your service. Yeah, I'm the matter. exact opposite. 99% of my the populace in my country, <laughs> you know, have gone through the ringer, you know, the the, the boot camp, you know being a cadet, being yelled at by a senior officer, someone who doesn't know you, doesn't care about you, no, yeah. he doesn't want to hear your story, he doesn't want to be that a friend, familiar. you know, that I familiar. just want you to follow the orders, so <laughs> I like that, I like that for you, you know. So, does, so you said everybody in Israel has to join the military? Basically, yes. Uh, if you're, you know, if you can somehow be relieved, relieved of service, uh, there are numerous ways to do that. You know, uh, the military doesn't accept uh, everybody equally. Yeah. You know, you have to go through the filter, you have to go through the system. Uh, you have to be checked, you know, uh, physically all your all your traits or all the prerequisite for the position that is allotted uh, for you and uh, the station that you will be uh, occupying. So all of that, uh, you need to go for the, the filter and everybody goes to uh, one specific place <clears throat> in uh, Jerusalem, which is, um, you know, the recruit uh, office for the Love entire that, nation. Yeah, so the offices, the administration offices for, for the entire nation is, uh, you know, uh, located, situated in one place uh, in Jerusalem. So everybody goes there. <laughs> so it's very stressful. It's like going to uh, the DMV, you know, without <laughs> just, just standing in lines for hours, you know, they, they put, put you one. into... Yeah, they put you into one office and they take you to another one to talk to some some well, B uh, word that some B word that you never met and you don't want to talk to, but you have to in order to pass, you know, the uh, the test and then and then you have the physical, you know, checkup, which is a uh, very uh, intrusive <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, in a lot of ways, but you know, it, it's necessary for a functioning uh, body. Hey, hey guys, uh, when, yeah, uh, sorry. When, no, no, uh, when you're at, um, you know, getting checked out, we call it, we call it MEPS um, here, uh -huh. a military enlisted processing center. Yeah. You have uh, to, you have to cough. You have to cough. Yeah. yeah. To, I was <laughs> oh, going to yeah. ask, do you have to like, do you have to duck walk? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Do they make you um, uh, get down on the floor and like duck walk like this? Naked? I don't know what you did in your service, okay? Yeah, I don't know Marine. about that. Oh, that's I what they make you do that. here in America. <laughs> they I make you duck, duck walk. walk. I, I had to duck walk. Okay. <laughs> no. So, okay. I was going to say it's uh, pretty ironic that uh, your place is in the most famous city on the planet ever. Ever, you know, I studied um, ancient Judea uh, when I was a classical mm -hmm. studies major. And, yeah, I'm uh, not from I'm not from Jerusalem, but but that's where, why. Okay, you know, let's start. Tel Aviv. Where are you from? I was oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was born in Tel Aviv, you know, okay. in the Ichilov Hospital in Tel Aviv. So all the street names are, are named after famous, you know, um, you know famous people but there are a lot of kind of weird uh, names like um there there are names named there sorry there are streets named after like leonardo da vinci like <laughs> it doesn't have <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with israel or, no, Judaism 
or or religion even for that matter. So I don't know who you know made the decision to name uh, the street a street in Tel Aviv Leonardo da Vinci. And nonetheless, it, we have a lot of cultural heroes, you know, that we can pick and choose from. And I don't know who came up with the idea of Leonardo da Vinci, but uh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> there are other streets that are named like, there's a very famous uh, Indian uh, poet. Um, I can't remember his name Rami? exactly right now. Is it Rami? Sorry? Uh, R H A. No, no, he's not. Rami is not Indian. He is Persian, but but that's fine. My bad. He's a Persian. <laughs> no. He's the Persian poet, so he's hey, not Indian. Hey, he's checked. a good one, man. He's a good he's one. a very good one. Yeah, uh, I concur. I concur. He is a uh, very good. I like his poets, uh, especially his very uh, light, um, erotic uh, kind of um, uh, poetry. Um, you know, erotic, not in the, in a kind of, you know, based, uh, obscene uh, type of way, right. but in a sort of, you know, lovely, uh, kind of a romantic, uh, type of, uh, poets. So I like him. Um, he is not, <laughs> he's not Indian. Uh, sorry. I, I don't want to, you know, um, cast any aspersions huh? on, on no, your no, no. intellect. Hey, or... I was wrong, man. I, I thought he was Indian. I didn't know he was a yeah, person. So his first name is uh, Tagore, Tagore, but but I can't remember the rest of the name. So I don't know why <laughs> there's a street named Tagore uh, after a famous Indian uh, poet uh, in Israel in Tel Aviv. But Tel Aviv is a very cosmopolitan, you know, uh, urban, dense, uh, populated area and city. Uh, Tel Aviv is a metropolis. It is uh, huge in, in terms of the uh, numbers of people actually living uh, in the confines of the city itself. Um, there are, you know, uh, per capita, there are, mo there, most people per capita live in the metropolis of uh, Tel Aviv, which is, which is constituted from different, you know, districts uh, uh -huh. and local local townships and yeah and uh, localities. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> oh <laughs> so yeah. I'm from Tel Aviv. What, uh, after after you were born in Tel Aviv. Um, yeah. What did you do? Where where did you go? Where did uh, you go to school? I was raised uh, in Tel Aviv after, <laughs> right after I was born, I was raised in Tel Aviv. And um, so we, I kind of grew up in a very, a very bohemian artistic, uh, kind of a secular uh, home. Um, no, 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 no type of a religion or, or, or anything like that. Um, I was uh, circumcised and I had uh, I had a bar mitzvah. So those Ooh. are the two. Yeah, so it, it's a, like I don't have a problem to divulge these kinds of uh, details because, you know, circumcision is so, you know, scarce. Um, yeah. Hundreds of millions of people, you know, get circumcised every year uh, yeah, around the world. <laughs> Yeah. I got cut. Yeah. Okay. Me too. <laughs> yeah, we, we, should, we should replace we should replace you with with a, a soundboard or something like no. Yeah, Just he does that. Um, no. Um, uh, so I went, um, you know, through a very normal type of uh, childhood, and nothing that rocks the boat uh, too much. Um, uh, it's, it's quite boring, you know, in, in the, the, the Tel Aviv years, you know, my formative, uh, years. Um, but at some point we moved away, uh, because of the financial crush, uh, cr crush. Yeah. Financial crash. Sorry, crash. Financial crash of the nineties. Um, you know, the, um, the dollar was at its low point uh, uh, in history, you know, 
at, at the lowest point uh, in history. So uh, buying, buying, buying different uh, properties, buying uh, different uh, commodities, um, you know, d different goods. Uh, it was very, it was very tough because uh, you had to pay like, I don't know. Well, uh, sorry, the, the other way around because because of the dollar because the dollar cra crashed. So uh, it was in Israel. It was a kind of a financial boom, uh, especially because of the centralized centralized uh, banking system uh, was introduced uh, for the first time uh, in history uh, of Israel. Uh, so it made it much you know much more beneficial to actually put your money and savings uh, inside of an account in in a safe safe place like like a bank uh, presumably you know uh, a safe place to put your money and keep your your savings and your future uh, safe uh literally safe <laughs> and um and so that kind of the the economic renaissance, you know, of the late 80s, you know, early 90s, that kind of uh, went away. Uh, and uh, we had to do it, you know, we had to go, we had to go and um, to someplace else. Um, and it's not that, that interesting, but um, so I was, as a child, I was a very curious, you know, rambunctious, um, uh, almost almost antisocial uh, kind of a kid. Uh, I never got along with my teachers that forced me to read and write and uh, to study material. Uh, like, like I never excelled, you know, in the exact sciences like math. Um, never understood it. Never could quite uh, get along, you know, uh, with it. Um, never understood core concepts, you know, like mathematic equations and uh, stuff like that. So I, <laughs> I gave it a rest <laughs> and uh, I focused more on humanity, yeah. you know, I focused on, more on the humanities, mm -hmm. you know, like literature, art, um, music, so I started learning to play the piano and the right. guitar. So I have those two skills in my bag. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a professional, you know, musician. I'm not that skillful uh, in playing either instrument, but I am capable, uh, you know, uh, I'm quite uh, competent uh, in both. Um, so uh, I also liked, a lot of uh, sports, you know, physical uh, sports. I never liked uh, contact sports, you know. Um, I, I never, I never could, you know. So I played, I played tennis. I played uh, badminton. Um, I also, you know, forget what I said, you know, a, a second ago because I was also <laughs> in a karate class. So I had. I love karate. Yeah, uh, I, I don't have a black belt, but I I have Taekwondo. I, have, Taekwondo I here. have a blue belt. I have a blue belt. Good. Yeah, sorry. No, I did Taekwondo <laughs> for eleven years, man. Uh, studying. Yeah, I'm gonna society. call you from now on. I'm gonna call you the commander. Yes, commander in chief. <laughs> As you can just so call me commander, or you can call me Andrew. It's it's okay. Okay, Andrew Mander. Yeah. Andrew Mander. There you go. Yeah, Andrew Mander. <laughs> that was one of uh, Caesar's. Commandrew. Commandrew. Andrew. That's what like you that, are. Yeah. I like, I like that, that one. Too. Yeah. And then you can yeah, call this go. guy. You can call him. You can call him the godfather. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> he is the he godfather. Like... No, he's more of a Richard Louis Dreyfus. You know, he's not, he's uh, not a yeah. godfather. I'll take that. Yeah. Dreyfus? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay, that's Why a good compliment right there. I feel like it's he's a great burnout. compliment. <laughs> we Sorry? need a bigger hey, we need a bigger boat, Richard. Yeah. 
a big, you need yeah. a bigger boat. I do need a bigger yeah, boat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Jaws. You yeah, know, me too. I love Jaws. Oh, um, it was a great I've movie. Seen it, I've seen it perhaps uh, eight eight times uh, or so, and yeah. each time, each time, it's, it's a better. different movie. Yeah. It's a different movie entirely. It's I never agree. the same movie. I don't know why, but it, <laughs> it never unfolds in the same way that you expect it to. And, yeah. um, I don't know why. It's such a great movie. And uh, I just... Hey, the, I, the, latest thing is, uh, the, the latest thing is putting your TV out by your swimming pool and watching it at night while you're swimming in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. I saw it as a kid and I was scared to go into the water for at least three weeks. I'm like, yeah. nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm people, not were, yeah. people were people stopped taking bass for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I'm trying to think what I was what what which movie actually influenced me to well I was um uh, funnily enough I saw uh, Bruce Lee's uh, biopic, you know the the old one. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. With the uh, when you know that kind of dramatic uh, biopic of Bruce Lee. Uh, you know, I was a kid. I was a very very small, maybe eight eight or nine, and it had this scene where Bruce Lee uh, just got injured. You know, he had a very severe back injury that almost completely you know shut down his uh, career you know terminated everything yeah. he uh, was doing his career and uh, he had this fever dream you know um and he had a nightmare about about he was he was training like in the training yard and uh there out from the shadows came came a samurai. Yeah, the samurai. samurai the, yeah, the samurai. Yep, yep. Didn't have a face. So that scene, you know, haunted me for at least, um, you know, six months or something like that. Oh, that when was, I was a kid. Uh, God, yeah. Wow, man, I can't remember the. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Um, Damn, I can't remember the the guy who played Bruce Lee, but that was a yeah, that was a great movie. It was. Hold on, let me look it up. Okay, Sorry. you think you, about it, Commander. Keep, yeah. keep on talking. Yeah. Let's go back to Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back so, uh, to like. Oh how, yeah. How how old are you when you uh, joined the military in Israel? Yeah, I was uh, twenty one and uh, on the brink on the brink of uh, twenty two. Uh, or something like that. Um, so it's quite old, you know, but because usually, um, usually you get uh, drafted at the age of uh, 18, and uh, I postponed uh, my service. Uh, I went, I went and uh, I went on a trip, you know, to uh, abroad. Uh, I went on a tour of uh, Europe. And uh, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> then I came back and I, I started uh, studying uh, in university. Uh, then I dropped. I dropped my. That's Karate Kid, I think. Man. Nope, it's the dra uh, that, dragon with Jason the, Lee. The dragon. Oh, that's the name of the biopic. Yeah, it's uh, Jason Lee. Um, he played Bruce Lee, and is that he, his son? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Well, no, 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 no it's his, not his son. His son is, um, he played the crow. Brandon. Uh, his, Brandon. Oh, Brandon, yeah, yeah, Brandon, Brandon Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jason the Lee. The crow. The crow. Well, um, Jason Lee played the biopic of Bruce Lee, and they, yeah. he had that fever dream, and he got hurt when he was um, yeah. going against the gangs uh, in San Francisco because they were teaching <laughs> yeah. the white people uh kung fu and they weren't that was against the law back then so sorry my bad yeah 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 very Continue, weird you guy sorry I saw, yeah that's fine i saw all the ip man you know recently i saw all the ip man movies i really yep i really got i i really got back into you know old old classic uh, karate kind of martial arts movies 
And I love them so much because they're so hacky and cheesy and, you know, they're fun uh, to watch. They're fast paced, you know, usually. Um, I love the Jackie Chan and the, the new uh, Karate Kid. Um, they didn't like the movie so much, but <laughs> but I like yeah. the Jackie Chan uh, for it. And I heard, uh, have you have you guys watched the uh, Cobra Kai? And then you, yes, uh, yeah, I watch a love bit it. Of it, love it. Such a no nostalgia. And, hey, you know, there's only one Karate down... Kid, and his name is Ralph Macho. Yeah. I'm sorry, of that's course. It. Of course, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, uh, what's her what's her name? A million dollar baby. What 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 oh, was her um, name? Uh, Hillary Swank. Hillary Swank, yeah. So Hillary Swank, you know, featured in the fourth installment of the Karate Kid franchise series. Um, it was bad, <laughs> unfortunately. I didn't. Uh, it was yeah. really bad. I w I wasn't a fan of that one. No, neither was I. It, it was a bad casting choice. She, uh, she was a very young actor, you know, inexperienced. Um, the the plot was bad. Well, I'm not going to break it down now. For, no, for no, you, no, but no, no. Hey, no, no that's no, another no, that's another on. podcast. We can do a whole movie podcast. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah, back yeah. to um, you're 21 and you're joining the Israeli. Yeah. Uh, you're going to boot camp and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah, so I dropped my studies uh, in favor of uh, the draft. Um, they they sent me a formal, you know, draft rec recruitment uh, letter. Um, you can't really, you know, you have two choices. Either either you choose to get sent off to prison, um, which be between between uh, three, three months uh, and uh, six months uh, period, depending on how, you know, and how uh, disobedient, uh, shall we say, uh, you were. Um, uh, not actual prison, uh, military, you know, confinement. And um, because the military is a, almost a different state entirely. It's an independent uh, body and institution. So uh, bases are not uh, located, you know, near uh, urban population, you know. Um, I'm not going to talk about, you know, uh, a lot about the specific you know, location, yeah. right. locations yeah, yeah. of the bases and stuff like that. Um, people can uh, look it up or uh, if they have the know-how, uh, um, I don't care to talk about that. Uh, another thing is um, I was drafted and I got through, you know, you immediately, you know, go from, from civil life into, you know, directly thrown uh, into military you know regiment um, and the uh, facilities and boot camp so i spent usually you spent a night uh, at the barracks uh, themselves before you get shipped off in the morning to start the boot camp okay so uh you you don't have any choice uh, in the matter. Uh, of course, of course, you get a questionnaire of what are your preferences. Okay, so you can pick and choose whatever preference you would, whatever whatever unit, um, whatever makes uh, Commandru you know laugh. That's that's always a <laughs> well, no guy. I'm just that's always they, a good thing. After see, no, after. Death after, after after boot camp, they give us a wish. It's called a wish list of where you want to go. Yeah, and exactly. Them. And you exactly. never get the first place you want to go. No, you, you get never the get the place. first place. Always get. <laughs> well, I got the. I got the next. I got the next to the last place. Nice. Next to last. Uh, so, <laughs> but.
But uh, I got drafted into the Air Force, uh, which I loved. Uh, the Air Force has a rich uh, heritage, you know, very, you know, there's a there's a pride, you know, there's a national pride about about the Air Force and justifiably so. Um, the Air Force has such a rich uh, time honored tradition uh, in all aspects, you know, uh, going back to the six day uh, war, of course, which was was internationally uh, renowned as one of the greatest um, battle, one of the gr greatest military victories, victories to have ever have have <laughs> have had happened um, in the history of the world, which I agree there are there aren't a lot of wars, you know, that start <laughs> at day one and end, you know, in in you know in a triumphant triumphant um, victor victory uh, mm -hmm. over the opposing opponents, um, you know, foreign military, um, especially, especially not against six different sovereign states, you know, um, it, it's just un, um, uncomprehensible, uh, not, not on, uh, Un uncomprehensible. I think that's the right word. <laughs> no, no, yeah, comprehensible. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, it, it's incomprehensible. Sorry, it's incomprehensible. Uh, you cannot fathom uh, any one, you know, sovereign state being able to hold their own, um, and 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 to come out on top. Uh, that is that is a majestic feat, you know, uh, strate strategically, you know, militarily, um, um, ev even in diplomatic, uh, you know, on the world stage, a diplomatic uh, status uh, that you get, um, you just came out on, on top. I mean, man, um, I'm reading about this, and you guys defeated three Arab armies, and you gained territory four times its original size, and became the yeah. preeminent military power in the region. You reshaped. And you have to, yeah, and you have you to, to lines. Think, yeah, you have to think about it uh, this way. So, in the war for independence in 1948, um, it is insane to think about. Uh, ben Gurion uh, is Ben Gurion's address of the Declaration of uh, Independence of Israel um, was met with a lot of criticism. You know, he was under fire <clears throat> from all sides, all sides of the Israeli cabinet, uh, the local, the local government. Um, no one liked that idea. No one liked that for Israel. They were sure, you know, a hundred percent that once once independence is declared, um, this will be the end of the Zionist ideal, the Zionist dream uh, of two thousand years. Um, you know, will will cease, cease to exist uh, alongside with the Jewish state and the Jewish people. Um, right after, on the same day that Ben Gurion declared <clears throat> independence for the state of Israel, Five foreign sovereign Arab countries attacked in in unison in concert, launched a massive wide scale attack on all fronts 
on Israeli sovereign soil. Uh, the newly newly established uh, country was facing its its end, you know, uh, in a moment's notice. That event, the War of Independence, is nothing short of a miracle for the Jewish people and the Jewish state as a whole. And I call it a Jewish, a Jewish state. Um, even though, even though we are a democratic republic, um, we, we still hold on to the Jewish identity uh, as our leading, you know, um, description. Um, so, um, I was very proud, in short, um, to be to be drafted to serve to get to be able to serve my country. Um, in boot camp, uh, we had four months uh, of you know arduous, um, very trying, you know hazardous hazardous condition. I was stationed in a very remote base, um, you know, very far away from home. Um, it was in the middle of the desert, you know, there's nothing around. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing um, for miles. <clears throat> so the base is very isolated. Um, so I had a very hard time to actually acclimate to the new uh, environment. Um, I was a different person back then. Uh, I did not have the social skills. I wasn't as charismatic. I wasn't as talkative as I am in front of you on this panel today and in general. But now that, that I am a teacher, you know, I have to talk for a living. So a teacher cannot, he has, you know, to cease, you know, to seize, seize the attention of the, of the crowd. He can never relent. Uh, you have to be there, you know, focused 100%, and you have to measure each and every, every syllable that exits, you know, your mouth, you know. That, that you other. So um, I wasn't like that. <laughs> I was very unapproachable. Uh, I had a lot of problems with my uh, bunkmates. Um, you know, the, the social cohesion of uh, the unit wasn't really existence, existent uh, people. There were people who had more kind of a, uh, more morale and they had more drive you know to actually complete complete the missions you know to <clears throat> to actually uh keep keep time you know uh, and uh, to <clears throat> to basically follow orders to to a t so um i was very very I was very dis disobedient. Um, I never got along with any of my superiors um, or my peers um, in boot camp. But later on, um, when when we were shipped off, you know, when we were actually assigned assigned to our you know, home bases. Um, sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't in a home base yet. Um, my position was requires, you know, training, and the military had had to train uh, people to do uh, this job that I was going to do. Uh, 
uh, in the Air Force. It was a specialized uh, type of field, uh, very technical, very logistical, you know, the uh, 180, you know, uh, it's just 180 from, from who I was. I wasn't a very technical, very scientific minded. Um, <clears throat> I did not have the, these uh, tendencies, so I had to uh, adapt. I had to learn, you know, right away uh, because you would you would get a lot of a lot of tests, you know. And so it was a it was another um, free free months uh, of courses, of course. <clears throat> Of course, the military regiment, you know, uh, you had to comply to uh, everything. You had to, um, you had to be on time uh, to every, every, uh, every rally, every session, uh, every working day, and you you had to have, uh, you had to do, you know, shifts. You had to do different uh, menial, menial uh, labor, you know, um, around around the base, and um, <clears throat> so it's funny because the 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 boot camp was was uh, so far away. It was in the middle of uh, nowhere in, in the desert, and the uh, and the. Uh, And the training, you know, the training uh, uh, base and the facility was uh, on the opposite side <laughs> uh, of the country. So I had to do a lot of travel. Um, so it was basically this. Um, before the military and before my university studies, I can say that I was not I was not a human being. Uh, so what I mean by that, um, I did not know almost any hardship before I got into the university and military because you know. This is, you know, this is real life. This is, this is the adult world, and nobody, you know, stops to hold your hand and fix things for you. And uh, you have to adjust and do it all on your own. And um, that experience, you know, forged, forged a new. Uh, simulacra, a new persona for me, um, and I am basically, I basically forged, <laughs> forged in fire. You know, um, of course there are people who had gone through unimaginable, unimaginable uh, suffering and, and torture, but that. You cannot compare, but no one can. <laughs> no one can com compare to some of the suffering uh, that occurs uh, in this world. But I'm just talking from my perspective. Um, the military teaches you so many things. You know how to be on time, how to get dressed, um, how to. How to do, you know, mo basic basic things, you know. A lot of people don't care to, to you know, uh, trim trim their nails or shave their hair, or shave their faces, or to even even you know, um, brush brush their teeth, you know. Basic things that you learn. <laughs> Uh, it's essentially some of these people need it, you know. <laughs> Don't get me wrong; some of you them know. do need. Yes, they do. To go yes, through, they do. Go through that process, you know. Learn to be a, an actual, an actual functioning uh, human being. Um, uh, 
um, I wasn't that bad, <laughs> but um, but some of the some of the other things that I picked up in the military is you know how to be how to be a leader a leader of of people um how to be able to speak how to be able to function in uh, different social situations and you know you have to stand up to the challenge because there are a lot of psychopaths you know in the in the higher ranks you know they 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 do they do and say stuff you know that no no normal no normal human being would do in any any other situation and you have to adapt you have to keep your composure you know you can never lash out at your superiors or you will be reprimanded you know quite severely um so you need to keep watch um, and also, you need you need to be able to to keep uh, keep your social uh, keep your street street cred. You know, um, nice. th there's a point there's a point where you know discipline uh, becomes abuse, and, and that's not right. And I encountered it I encountered it uh, a couple of times where senior officers were reprimanded for you know unethical or you know behavior not becoming of a superior uh, officer and uh, you know unit uh, leader and chief so uh i'm not saying that everyone's like that but i'm just saying that uh there there's some bs that does not need to be tolerated. You are essentially an asset uh, of the military. It doesn't mean that they own your ass. You're an asset. Um, so, Command Drew, what do you think about all the things that I said? And do do either Richard or Command Drew have Command any Drew. questions? Command Drew. Command Drew. Yeah. Um, Fleek, you want to go ahead with that or? I just I, I think you're totally right, guy. Um, there are some people out there that take advantage of uh, the chain of command and they think because they're a superior officer, they get to do whatever they want and they can tell whatever, you know, whatever the enlisted guys, hey, go do that. And it's immoral. It's against everything that we've stood for. But you know what? It's a it's an order. We have to follow it. And guy it sounds like the Israeli Air Force or the Israeli military, basically you have to, an order is given, you have to follow it, correct? Yeah, you have to, you have to be very, uh, you know, there are other more, more extreme, you know, uh, combative uh, units, you know, and, uh, you know, troopers, uh, they are very tough. They are, yes, you're a trooper. I was a, a grunt in Iraq twice in Ramadi and wow. Fallujah, and um, wow. yeah, I, I, yes, I've Very seen, tough. I've seen some horrible stuff, um, done some horrible stuff that I've uh, yeah. absolved and confessed my sins, um, and I've, hopefully that's going to be okay um, with the big man, uh, but yes, yeah. I. I I, yeah, I've done some um, morally ap reprehensible things and um, I wasn't, yeah. uh, I wasn't happy about that. It, 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 it actually messed me up for a long time after, and I'm just starting now to get back to being me. Like I, like now, like you were talking about a 180, I have done a 180 with my life. Like six years ago, I was a drunk. I was a narcissist. I didn't care about anyone except for myself. And now I'm, I, I try to help people like, you know, Fleek and I, we try to help people with this podcast. We help people with the VFW. We help our fellow veterans and you are a veteran. Um, yeah. You know, you're, you're a brother. I'll tell you what, I never had to perform any morally re. Uh, Irre sorry, uh, uh, reprehensible. reprehensible, reprehensible yeah. yeah, sorry, reprehensible um, 
activities or or uh, <clears throat> or you know it, something never like that but at the end of the day um it's a fine balance uh, it's a fine balance uh, you can be a, a pencil pusher you can be a pencil push, pusher and still yep. you are contributing on some level to um, exactly that's dude that's we talk about that in the show all the yeah. time yeah it, it i wasn't out. that no, no i no, wasn't yeah. a pencil pusher I, you know, I was a field. He was. He was. A, <laughs> I, I was a grunt. He was a pencil. I was in the field. I was in the field. Uh, I wasn't a combatant. I wasn't a combatant, uh, but I was a supportive uh, combatant. Nonetheless, I had yeah. a, <clears throat> I had a personal issued firearm at all times. I had, you know, the standard good old, you know, Viet, Vietnam M16. Um, you know, I carried it with me everywhere. Uh, also, me always the, the, the magazine. Everything. Yeah, <laughs> everything, everywhere. Uh, the magazine was always inserted into the chamber. It was never outside. <laughs> um, I was in charge. I was charged with very uh, delicate, delicate. Um, things that i had to oversee so i had to protect myself mm -hmm. as a military asset and as a human being and also i had to be i had to protect protect and guard the things okay the i can't yeah, the stuff you have. yeah, yeah of course yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, i know i know your country's at war right now uh, can your country call you back and make and make you serve again? They certainly can. There are a lot of people who get they get you know a discharge. You know, not not dishonorably discharged, but they're yeah. just no yeah. li no longer required uh, to um, to um, show up. Sh shall we say to for for service, mm -hmm. um, I I I'm not I don't I don't know if I'm fully you know out of the hook for for military you know vet 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 sorry uh, veterinary it's not vet veterinary veterinary service that's not a correct term you're not a veteran. Uh, you're, uh, have you fully uh, completed obligated your, your obligated, obligated your service. Your service? Yes, I have. I have, yeah. and uh, and uh, <clears throat> I have, but I don't know if I'm not, I'm completely off the hook. Um, so they can, they can, but I I want to be able to protect and fight for for my country. But um, I, I, I just, you know, it, it's such a conundrum. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not above it. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that my life is the most important thing. Um, and I'm willing to, under, under, under certain set circumstances. I'm willing to risk my life for someone else and for for my country, and I fought for my country. I made my contribution, um, but I'm just not in a place where I can do that. You know, mm -hmm. um, mentally, uh, I still. Well, I, I'm not part. Of, I, if i will i will go back to you know if they ask me to you know you have to put you know 30 days uh, on december you have to put i don't know 30 to 60 days or whatever um <clears throat> just to come back um so uh, most of the time you're you're with other you know 
uh, veterans. You're not, you're not with the rookies or cadets, cadet, cadets or, or other other junior officers. You're, you're with other veterans. <clears throat> Uh, they have a specialized uh, veteran uh, unit uh, because they know that the the, the social cohesion, you know, uh, they cannot they cannot uh, mess with it, and uh, you know uh, it's already there. You know, you're you're going back, you know, to people you you left, perhaps you you never spoke with some of these people or but if if you're a military combatant you know most of the time they keep you know pretty pretty good you know uh, relationships uh, with each other you know they they write they write a letter on um, i can't say christmas but i can uh, <laughs> They write a, a happy Monica birthday. Monica or um, Yom Kippur or something like that, right? No, no one says happy Yom Kippur because you have to <laughs> fast. You have to fast uh, the entire day. And Yom Kippur is a Jewish, <laughs> is, it's, a, it's a national uh, Jewish yep. um, morning, morning day for yes. For the destruction, the destruction of the second temple. So yes. I don't think nobody. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Commander. Thank you. No, hey, <laughs> hey, listen, um, guy. I my best friend uh, Matthew Levy. I grew up with him. I went to his bar mitzvah. I was 13, and he invited me to his bar mitzvah. And I just, you know, I mean, I I, I studied a lot of uh, the Jewish culture uh, in college. I had a couple classes. Um, and I just, I find it fascinating. And and I'm a Freemason. So, I mean, you know, and a, a lot of the Freemason history, we talk yeah. about this. We talk about the yeah, second. I had a we, feeling. I had some kind of feeling. We talk about, uh, about Herod. Me, yeah. and we talk about um, King Solomon. And, and, you know, and mm. from our Freemason talks, we, and, and, and a lot of the reading of the Bible and Old Testament, mm -hmm. you know, I... You know, we we've we studied the Jewish culture and yeah, you know, I mean yeah, you study you study a bit a bit of a Kabbalah. I, no, actually, I have Kabbalah. No, I have never. What is wait for our Kabbalah? That's is that different from Old Testament or is that? Uh, it's very different. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I was like um, Kabbalah is like a thing with the bracelets and stuff, right? <laughs> Um, you're you're half right, you know. Um, okay. The the thing with the bracelet, you know, pertains specifically to having good luck, or and and also warding off, off evil, evil spirits, spirits, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the kind of superstition of the the evil eye. Like uh, so the Greeks, the Greeks have the 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 evil eye and they wear it yeah. they wear it around for yeah. luck which is really yeah strange because i saw that in turkey i saw that in greece and it's you know it's supposed to be medusa's eye right yeah exactly and it's, it's supposed to be eye. good luck yeah. which is yeah that's I, i've got a friend that was just wearing one the other day i was like that's a that's a medusa's eye why are you wearing oh i'm wearing it for good luck i'm like oh okay yeah so, i know, recently I didn't, <laughs> I recently picked up a Manly P. Hall's uh, the <clears throat> the secret teachings of all ages. Uh, pretty good uh, reading. Uh, very. Okay. Yeah, the secret teachings. May, maybe that's maybe that's that's not the direct uh, title, uh, but it's something like that. The. Uh, uh, is it by Emily? Emily? No, no, no. It's Manly P. Hall. It's not. Oh yeah, Manly. Yeah, there it is. Manly P. Hall. It was a very Manly P. Hall. The secret infinite. teachings and encyclopedic outline outline of Masonic. No, no, not that, not that. No, Manly P. Hall. The secret teachings of all ages. Exactly that. Yes. And it's um, an encyclopedic outline of Masonic and... He was an stuff. infamous uh, Freemason. He was a sort of 
Hermetic, first... Kabbalistic, and Rosicrucian Symbola. Symbol. 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 Symbolical philosophy. Oh, yeah, symbolical philosophy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not a Rosicrucian, but I know a couple Rosicrucians. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are pretty cool. Hey, hey guy, yeah, how many? Uh... They are. Sorry. How, how, many, how many languages can you speak? Well, I speak Hebrew. I speak English uh, fairly well. Um, you know, I made my living yeah. teaching English. I teach English at, at the preparatory school for English at Bar Ilan University, Israel. Um, nice. I'm also, um, what I was trying to say, as I, guess, I got entangled in my own mind a second here uh, very weird <laughs> i'm sorry my 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 wires get get yeah. crossed and be, because my mind is thinking at, at a at a speed of 200 you know miles per ha per hour per second so it's a uh, it, did, did you uh, are, are you, you very I'm are the you same very way. religious hey, guy on the same way oh yeah sorry 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 how many languages <laughs> Yeah, okay, like let's leave, let's leave that that question uh, hanging and let's talk about sure. uh, how, how many languages. Okay, just a second. So I speak Hebrew, you know, fl fluently. Uh, I'm a native Hebrew speaker. I love, oh. absolutely love that Hebrew language. It's such, it's such a you know complex. Uh, it's a, it has a lot of deep, you know, uh, meanings and, and roots and, you know, the applications of the Hebrew language, you know, there are a lot, there are a lot of uh, terms, you know, in English that originate in Hebrew, like uh, you say, uh, li like in the Netherlands, in the Netherlands, uh, for example, in the Dutch language. Uh, they say the mazel, and the mazel means mazal tov, means good fortune in Hebrew. So uh, they had a very thriving, you know, Jewish community uh, in the 17th, uh, 16th, and uh, 18th century, century that ever that since was was almost completely eradicated and uh, the events of the Holocaust and the aftermath, of course, of wor World War II. Unfortunately, um, some of the most br brilliant uh, Jewish minds originate from, you know, Holland, from uh, Amsterdam specifically. So that's very unfortunate, but I don't speak Dutch. Uh, my father can speak uh, Dutch very well, uh, Dutch, uh, German. My mother also speaks uh, Italian. She she's such a, a bright intellectual, you know, sco scholar. She knows she knows Latin and Greek. She knows she knows Hebrew. She knows uh, you know you know Greek. Or Latin. Uh, two two years of ancient Greek and six years of Latin, sir. Yeah, two years for ancient Greek is not a lot, but six years for Latin is is is, is quite good. Yeah. Oh, so. hey, it was. Um, I mean, I love the Latin language. I studied Rome and I studied Greece and I studied yeah, it's tough. Uh, battles. It's a and very Greece. it's a very tough language, you know, uh, to learn. Very very tough very um uh, there are a lot of you know i think i think japanese even is uh, easier uh, to learn uh, than than latin but it's true it is i've tried yeah. i've tried I've, I've tried to learn japanese and and latin is way easier than japanese and i even try to learn hebrew i can only say shalom and tov which means good t-o-v right tov yeah yeah uh, t-o-v yeah tov Tov. Tov. That was yeah. the first word I learned when I got Heathen. to Israel. Was Tov. Yeah, um, it won't get you far in Israel, but <laughs> it's, uh, Shalom, Shalom will get you a lot shalom. further. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, is, what does Shalom mean? Can you break that down? Uh, 
Shalom means it's a greeting. It, it essentially means hello. Um, but, but the literal, the literal meaning means have peace. Okay. Or I come in peace. Okay. That's the literary, okay, meaning uh, of the word. It means peace or peace be upon you or yeah, peace be with you. Yes, yeah, sir. I come in peace. Yeah. It's like in Arabic, you know, Arabic adopted, you know, of course, you know, Arabic. Come, Andrew. So, uh, like, yeah, so, well, no, 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 no. Uh, salam alaikum. Uh, alaikum salam. I know how to count yeah, to 10. That's exactly the same. Exactly and the I know, same. Peace uh, be upon you. Stop or I'll shoot. I used to know how to say that in okay. Arabic. Um, I can't say yeah, that. I know that. I know that also. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you, you had to learn? Um, obviously, you've been yeah. to the Arab states as well. Uh, no, no. God never forbid. Been? No. no. <laughs> Uh, never, never physically been been there. Okay. Uh, of course, um, we ha uh, there. There's one there. There's one op operation that I can talk about, okay. uh, which is a, a fairly, fairly innocent uh, uh, event. Nothing too crazy. Um, so, the first time I rode. Uh, I don't don't say road. Uh, I've been yeah I've been I've been on a helicopter, so it was awesome. You know, um, we were. <laughs> it's funny because they are fun. We, yeah, they are so fun. You know, I think <laughs> I think I think it's more fun to to ride in a helicopter than than a plane. Yeah. Because it's just whoop, whoop, and then you're there. You know, you don't have to think about anything, and you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't shake. It's stable. You know, I like that a lot. So we put on our gear. You know, we have to. We put on all the, all the accoutrements. You know, the the, the helmet. You know, I have my my big boombox. You know, on on my ears. Um, I have my my private uh, firearm, and we're taking off, and uh, we're taking off, and it's majestic because you see the 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 kind of the scene the scenery the scenery of the the desert, and there's nothing. It, it's like look looking into an empty ocean. You know that's that's a desert. You know. And it has a lot of shapes and a lot of colors to it. Uh, it has, it has some, you know, some some greenery, but not a lot. Uh, it has the uh, craters, uh, a lot of craters, a lot of uh, mountainous areas, very barren. So we assisted uh, another combatant unit in. Uh, guarding, uh, guarding a helicopter that was uh, downed, uh, out of commission. Uh, the pilot was okay. Nothing happened to him. So um, helicopters, it's not a secret. You know, they they have an engineer and they have a pilot, of course. Um, so it was a great experience. Uh, we got down, you know. Uh, we made 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 land landing, um, and we had to guard. <laughs> we had to guard the helicopter, you know, in the middle of nowhere. So, um, and that was that was a two day kind of a event until they were able to ship more crew members to actually um you know maintenance crew to be able to fix uh, fix the problem and get the helicopter up and running and uh, yeah that was a great uh, experience and we had another supportive uh, combatant uh, unit um 
I don't, it's not a secret, but I don't want to say the, the word of the, the unit because nope. it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound good in, in English. <laughs> uh, it, it, it doesn't pop, uh, it, it doesn't slide off to the tongue, oh, you know, so I won't say it. No, but, no, no. Uh, that's fine, man. It was a great experience. So that was the first time. So in, in a span of two days, uh, I got to have my first experience of riding a helicopter and the second experience of, you know, we hightailed uh, back in, yeah. in a helicopter. So it was awesome. Helicopter. <laughs> That's, That's cool, man. Cool. Hey, That's so uh, cool. we're, we're almost time. We have to wrap it up. So I, I just have a couple questions for you. What What's your uh, favorite food? Mm. Great question. Um, I would say my great, my favorite, my most favorite food is, you know, hands down, pasta. It doesn't matter whatever whatever type of, uh, you know, ravioli or uh, uh, bucatini or fusilli or uh, whatever. Bucatini. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Makes silly, sense. Your, your mother. Name. Your no, mother, no, I make it. I oh, make, you make it. I make, oh, the, wow. I make the pasta. <laughs> I make everything at home. You know, I love to cook. Uh, ever so since I. I saw, ever ever since I was introduced to Gordon Ramsay, I started cooking like crazy. Nice. I love him. He yeah. is an, an insane British hey. man with a, a crazy hair, but I love the guy. Um, I don't care. Like, if I never meet him, like, I won't cry about it, but I would like to at least uh, tell him, you know, you, you have to tone it down a bit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck you're, saying you're that, dealing, Lord Ramsey. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're dealing, at the end of the day, you're dealing with other human beings like yeah. yourself. Okay, nobody's effing perfect you know nobody no you know some people sometimes you know um sometimes you just cook with with a donkey sauce and it happens you know sometimes it happens to some people but (laughs) you 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 don't have to make a scene you know about it you know uh, do you you have a lot of recipes sorry you have a lot of recipes? recipes uh yeah um but I don't I don't know the 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 names of of the uh, you know the, the different the different condiments and uh, the different um, Well guy you're talking to two chefs right now. I was a chef for 10 years. This guy has wow. a cookbook. Wow. Yeah. That's, I, that's you know, awesome. Yeah. Um, I was gonna so say, sauce, if you have any recipes you should send them to me. I'll put them in my next cookbook. Yeah, we're making yeah, we're yeah. making another cookbook. Okay. Uh, okay, I will uh, let me let me let me make you a Shark Tank offer. Okay, oh, so oh. Uh, um, I will give you the the the, the recipe. Um, do are you working with any with any uh, restaurants? Any? No, I just do it myself he just for fun. He, I uh, used to, backyard. but um, I just cooked for two hundred people like a month ago. Um, I can use uh, my church's kitchen all the time. Mm. Yeah, so I'll ki- I'll give you it uh, for free. Um, <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to make any headway, you know, in, in the pasta yeah. realm, you know. So, <laughs> so, you know, I'm not a professional uh, cook. If you got uh, a never... recipe for latkes or um, what are those? <laughs> no. Dude, if you got a recipe uh, never, for that, I would. I, would I never, I you. never went. I never went to Cordon Bleu, you know, the the school for, for the I, culinary did I. art. Uh, I don't know anything about what true cooking actually uh, looks like, but uh, I have a weird uh, kind of method of uh, preparing, uh, specifically spaghetti. Um, so I like to chop up uh, all the materials, uh, uh, all the all the ingredients uh, for for the recipe for the dish. Uh, I chop them up. So it's it's a red onion, uh, one one 
one red onion, uh, one and a half uh, plain, plain uh, white onion. Um, also, also, I don't know what's in it. It's a green, green onion, you say? A also, green onion. Yeah. Scallion. Green onion, Scallion. yeah. The, the, yeah. the long. Yeah, the long, yeah, the, the long, green onion. Long, uh, yeah, 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 just... green onion. <laughs> Uh, green onions. So um, I chop up uh, a couple of uh, cherry tomatoes, Ooh, a couple yummy. of regular regular mm. uh, tomatoes, also um, mushrooms. Uh, it doesn't matter which type, you know. Um, I I have the I have the plain plain uh, portobello uh, mushrooms that I chop up. Um, what else? Um, I have, yeah, um, uh, onion and garlic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, three, uh, I think four, uh, two of, ga of garlic. Um, love it. Yeah. I cut them up. I slice them real yep. thin, Oof. you know, almost. Yeah, yeah very nice. To the eye. Yeah. I love that. The thinner, the better, you know, you get more of the quality mm -hmm. of the the onion and the, the garlic inside. And um, um, what else? I'm trying to think here because I, I'm um, fresh, fresh basil. I love. Oh, yeah. Love fresh, fresh basil. I have a basil plant, you know, that I, yes, that I pick. I pick I pick the the leaves right off the basil plant, and um, so I use the durum durum uh, spaghetti um, a flour durum yeah. it's called a flour yeah durum flour spaghetti. yeah of course yeah very good for people who have who have di uh, different do you, you know do you make uh, your own do you make your own pasta like like no. You know, <laughs> I never took it that far, you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I never went out and purchased, you know. Uh, it's dude, a, it's a, tough. A pasta kind like, of a thinner. You put the you put the flour there. You make a little crevice for the egg, and then you just mix it in, and then you yeah, have to cut I know, it into strips. I, know. I, I never, I never done that. That's <laughs> dude. That's that dude. That's legit. I mean, I've I've done it once. Yeah, and I will I'm never not do legit. it again. I'm not it's, legit. I, I I'm a poser, you know. It takes yeah. not no 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 no. This is really cool because, like, we're getting to know you. We're getting to know the the, the world that you Thank live you, in. Thank you, Commander. Commander. Hey, listen, I got a lot of respect for people of Israel, okay? I I love the country. When I went there, I want to go back. My church is actually – they're going um, – my priest is going on a sabbatical, and they're going to Jerusalem. And, I mean, I've been to the Sukh. I've been to the – the four sooks. I've been to uh, the Wailing Wall. I've been to. Um, I have a picture of myself on the back gate. I went to the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Masada, uh, Bethlehem, um, the Dead Sea. I got to see the Dead Sea. That was like the coolest thing. I actually got to swim in the Dead Sea. I like. I floated like right on top. Yeah. It was so cool. Yeah, you, you, you can. You can't really swim, you know, in the waters. It's oh yeah, it's, it was like I, it, it's it was, yeah, it's it was amazing. It was all I just I love your country. I really do. The food was great when I was there. We were there for six days, and mm. I loved every bit of it. Yeah, why don't why don't you join uh, your church and uh, cruise yeah, and come up to Israel? Why not? My wife and I, we are planning, of, like, we're going to turn 50 in about four years. And so we're debating on places to go. And Israel is is one of them. So mm. you, yeah. we might be knocking on your door. Uh, he didn't tell you where you, he lives. I know. Mormon. I Mormon at, at my door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, no. I am definitely not a joking. Mormon. No offense to the Mormons. I am not a Mormon. No, I'm not. I'm not taking any. I'm not taking any offense. For the more Mormons, of course. Yeah. Hey, uh, but I, I like I like the Mormons. Uh, I I understand the 
the Mormon church is uh, pretty good. I'm not a Mormon historian by any, any means, but I just love, you know, you can't, you can't not love, you know, some of the concepts and the notions that, you know, um, you know, um, the, the, Jesus the Mormon... was, he, he was over, he was over in America. That's, I was like, yeah, when, did he have, he was, when did he have time to go to America? Cause I don't, I don't remember reading about that at all. Yeah, I don't think he could walk uh, that far I, on I water. So. <laughs> yeah. Probably I just, not. you know, I think, I, know. He would have, I think he would have drowned, you know. <laughs> um, no, I'm just joking. But um, so uh, make nice. make the pasta, make the pa the pasta as you see uh, fit. Um, I just take all the ingredients, I chop them up, I you know, I toss them in one pan, you know, uh, you know, a, a wide, wide, uh, wide, uh, deep uh, yeah. pan, you know, uh, and I, <laughs> I, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very sacrilegious. To, so any, any Italian ears, you know, you can <laughs> just shut it off, you know, and we'll, we'll tell you when you can uh, come back. Um, so I take <laughs> I take the pasta <laughs> spaghetti and I just dump it in, you know, to the to the pan with the ingredients. I I boil the hot water, you know, I pour it on the onto the thing and then I light the stove. Um and <laughs> no, and then I, I, I cook it, you know. Um and it, and at the end, I add I add now Italians. You okay? Go back to your safe place. Okay, we're going. To, <laughs> I use I use you know a mushroom cream. You know, but I don't make it. I I buy it at oh, yeah. a store. So I use a mushroom mushroom cream. Uh, I I used to do you know a marinara sauce, but I I kind of I like mushroom uh, cream uh, better for it. I think the result uh, is better uh, in terms of taste, and it, it's also a lot easier to clean later. <laughs> so, yeah, so I that's gotta, how I do. It. I gotta yeah. I gotta make you my fettuccine Alfredo, man. Yeah, you, die. you should. Oh, you should I will ship it. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> send you it, yeah. I'm gonna send you my recipe. That um, I would love for you to try out, man. I really would. Yeah, I would. I All would right. love to try some of your okay. delicious, Please authentic. Send him, a, send him your cookbook, man. Um, yes. Boutique, boutique uh, spaghetti, you know, pasta. Yeah, if you uh, email me your address, I'll I'll be more than happy to send artisanal, you artisanal artisanal pasta, of course. Art yeah, artisanal yeah yeah that's right artisanal pasta that's awesome. Yeah. Yes, but but guy, you need a uh, you need a email fleek your address so he can send you his cookbook. Of course, of course, I will. Yeah, I'll me send too. Because I I definitely I'm definitely gonna send you some stuff, and I want some stuff in return yeah, yeah. from Israel. <laughs> what would you like, uh, sir? I want I want an IDF T-shirt, okay? Because I can't find the one that I got. The Israeli Dis Defense Force. Um, I don't I don't have an IDF T-shirt, but I can give you. My unit's uh, T-shirt, if you okay. would like. No, that's a fair deal. I, I, yeah, I'll take that's that. awesome. Yeah, I can I can send you my unit badge uh, if you want. Cool. Also. Oh, dude, that would be yeah, that would be. I, we'll send you um, we'll send you our our coin of our post yeah. and um and something is that, else. Is it a Bitcoin? No, it's <laughs> a new. It is not a Bitcoin. No, no, right. no it, well, it is. We not gotta a wrap Bitcoin. it up because I have to go cut my oh, breath. You you're you're cutting the grass now? Yeah, I got to. I'm busy all weekend. Okay, all right, good to go. So yeah, we gotta wrap it up. Spend an hour and a half anyway. Guy, but, hey, we before we shut it down, I, we I want him. We win. We we want a number two. We want a, yeah. a second interview with you. Okay. Yeah. yeah we, I don't want a number two. I want a, a second. <laughs> you'll get a second interview. Okay, Commander. Okay. Yeah. okay. Hey, he's pretty good, man. He's pretty good. So uh, Richard, before, are you are you also uh? 
quote no. unquote Mason, Mason Street? No, sir. I'm trying no. to get him. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, no. Um, no. I don't like killing goats. We don't kill goats. <laughs> we don't ride goats. We're not trying to take over the world. You, you don't. Hey. You don't. You don't like to worship a decapitated. Hey, head. listen, yeah. man. We we take we do our prayers on the Bible. Okay, we are very very. <laughs> yeah, we are the very... Bible. Yeah, the Bible. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. It's, it's the regular. Yeah, the Bible that I use like every <laughs> Sunday. It's a, like. Yeah. So, hey, uh, <laughs> Before we shut it down, I, we we usually uh, ask for something, uh, ask questions profound. at the very end, profound. But uh, can, can you do me a favor? Can you uh, give us a prayer in Hebrew? Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. You know, I have, I have a the Talmud. Do you have a Talmud right there? No, I wish I had. You know how expensive Talmuds are. They are very expensive. That would be uh, yeah. I guess. They are very expensive. Hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Wow. Um, let me look here, because I I'm not I'm not a religious person. I I I I I pray in my own way. You know. I yeah. have a, Um. I I sort of uh. I sort of I like to I like to meditate, but maybe maybe I'm uh, worshiping uh, Satan by by mistake, but um, <laughs> but maybe maybe I doesn't meditate go well. twice a day, man. So that's <laughs> maybe. Good. meditation is good. <laughs> yeah, I I meditate twice a day. Yeah. So. Well, he's cutting um, heads off of goats. Oh, God, yeah, please. exactly, and goats. serve them up, and serve them up, yeah, yeah. Oh, get, to, to your 200 get, yeah, that's what they're eating. Now, they had they had brisket and ham and, uh, and <laughs> yeah. turkey, yeah. those 200 people, <laughs> it was, they didn't... It was ham. <laughs> Do you have a prayer? Um, I don't know, I, I don't I'm not, I'm not finding anything. Can you uh, can you do the uh, can you do give, the give us, some prof- give us something profound in Hebrew? Yeah, something profound in Hebrew. Something profound. Okay. <clears throat> let me <clears throat> let me take it here. Okay. Um. Could you wait just a second, yeah. or yeah, you need you need to no, run? Go, go. No, no, yeah. go, ahead. To, go ahead. To cut the grass. Oh no! Okay, no, I'll, I'll be I'll be back in just a second. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Dude, it's like it's almost like three o'clock. Is yeah, it's like three o'clock in the morning over there. <laughs> he's gonna get some. He's been. He's gonna get some sleep or something. He's got. He's got kids to teach tomorrow. I, I don't think he uh, ever sleeps because he didn't. Yaw- he hasn't yawned one time. No, he has not. I don't. I don't have anything. You know, I can hear you. I can hear I know. you. <laughs> I know. We're, I know you can we're, hear us. We're just. We're, we're saying we're impressed that you haven't yawned or you're not sleepy. You're not. You're in your yeah, pajamas. Like, no, really no. Talking. I just. I just enjoy good company so much. Oh man, right here, really. right here, brother. Really, right. I'm in the zone. Uh, don't worry. I'm. Oh. I'm not on any kind of. You know. Uh, how do you, how do you, uppers a, drugs? No, no, a one a one what a a a one is substances. Or I, I I can't remember what it what it's called the 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 grading system or whatever. Yeah, I forgot how it's called. I'm not on any. You know, no, no, that's okay. Amphetamines. Yeah, <laughs> amphetamines. Yeah, there you go. Amphetamines. I do not. I do not. Uh, you know, I do not uh, consume uh, any. Libations. Um, yeah. Hey, I'm uh, right there do... with you, man. Six years sober. Yeah. I haven't had a drink in six years. Yeah, I I hadn't had a drink for 30 free. No, just no. Uh, I, I drink beer, but but get this, I, I drink beer one a year. One a year on my on my birthday. Hey, and well, that's actually, it. Wait a minute, I got a question. What's the beer that they serve in Israel? What's it called? Yeah, um, I don't like it so much, but uh, there are a couple of brands, but uh, but the two leading, you know, uh, brands is called the uh, Maccabee and Gold Star. Maccabee. So those are yes, Maccabee, 
Um, of course, you know about the basketball team, basketball yeah. team, Maccabi, Tel Aviv, you know, was one of the strongest, you know. Uh, yeah. Indeed. And it's one of and the last were... books of the Old Testament. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, no, no. Or is it Malachi? I don't want, I don't want to correct you because you're such a great, nice person. Commander. Oh, so, man, no, no, no. no. I don't oh, want no. to be. Shots. I don't want to be. I don't want it to be an a hole, you know. At this you time of it. the night, be an a hole guy. Do, it. do you want me to be an a hole? Malachi, can. sorry, not Maccabees. Those are people. Malachi yes, is the last Malachi. book in the Old Testament. Malachi is one of the one of the last twelve prophets. Prophets, of, yep. Yeah, in the Old Testament. So. <laughs> It's a good thing that you caught yourself. Uh, oh yeah, no, I just I get Maccabees and because Malachi. I would have, I would have, I would have ripped you a new one if uh, <laughs> if you hadn't. So, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Professor. I am so sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, so sorry. I have an MA, master's degree, and bachelor's bachelorette's degree, art history, English literature, and you contemporary. Have a, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. You have a degree in art history? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. I that's dude, I got an A in that class. Roman and Greek wow. uh, art and archaeology. Um, yeah, I got Are an A in that class. Guy? I'm sorry, I am yeah. I'm, I'm Where, in university classes? I know um uh oh the Arapacus, uh the uh the, the art the piece of art. Uh, yeah, 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 the yeah, Augustus, yeah. The villa the villa the Augustus of, of Prima yeah. Porta. Uh um, yeah. The the, the goddess, the snake goddess, or the goddess of Willendorf. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Venus, Venus of yep. Willendorf. Venus of Willendorf the, the, with the with the the big breasts yeah, the and the big ass. The prehistoric, yeah. the prehistoric. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. That statuette. <laughs> okay, uh, you get an A again. <laughs> eh, I'll get a okay. B. I'll take a B I, plus from you. Go ahead. Go. I, I I haven't found any you know piece of you know. Uh, high kind of literature and in Hebrew, okay, we don't have time for that um, okay. to sift sift through everything. I have a few things in mind, but I'm not going to get to go and get them right now. So, yeah, I will read you <laughs> Emmanuel Kant. You know, Kant. Um, Fuck yeah, Kant. dude. Holy shit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Emmanuel Hunt. Yeah. I like and his that, name. That's his actual name. Kunt, K -A -A yeah, Kant. K-A-A-N-T. Yeah, Kant. It's, it's uh, pronounced Kant. Kant. It's Emmanuel yeah. Kant. He's a I'm going with Kant. I'm going with Kant. So listen up. Listen up, boys. Okay. okay. This, is, this is Hebrew. This is the best of the best uh, you can get. Okay. Alpichen. <laughs> היו רחוקים מלפקפק בנוכחותו של מושג המוסריות. להפך, הם היו מדברים בצער עמוק על חולשת האדם ועל חוסר שלמותו של הטבע האנושי, שאמנם אציל הוא עד כדי להעמיד לו למצווה רעיון הראוי כל כך להוקרה, אבל יחד עם זה חלש הוא מכדי לחיימו, ושאינו משתמש בתבונה. שהייתה צריכה לשמש לו לקביעת חוקים, אלא לשם פיקוח על צורכי נטיותו, נטיותיו, נטיותיו, סורי. אם בייחודן, או על הצד היותר טוב, כשאין מתחות זו עם זו ככל האפשר, באמת אי אפשר בהחלט כי יוברר על ידי הניסיון בוודאות גמורה מקרה מפורש אחד שבו יהא הכלל המעשי של הפעולה עם כל התאמתה מושג החובה. אמנם יש שגם לאור בחינת נפשנו החמורה ביותר לא נמצא שום דבר שיעצור כוח להגיענו לפעולה זו או אחרת לקרבנות לקורבנות, sorry, קורבנות means victimhood, okay? גדולים כל כך, 
מלבד הנימוק המוסרי של החובה. אבל אין להסיק מזה כל עיקר בוודאות כי שום מניע נסתר של אהבה עצמית כשהוא מתחפש בדמות מושג החובה לא היה למעשה. הסיבה העיקרית שהכריעה את הרצון אלא שאנו נוטים להחניף לעצמנו ולהתעמר במניע אצילי יותר שאנו מייחסים לנו מתוך טעות בעוד שלמעשה לא נוכל לעמוד בשלמות על המניעים הנסתרים אפילו על ידי בחינת עצמנו המאומצת ביותר. אוקיי, okay, how's that? <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. That was I great, love, buddy. There, I love Hebrew, there's man. There's zero, zero relation to, for English and between English and Hebrew, unfortunately. It's not a Latinized, it's not a Roman, Rome, no. it's not a Greek, uh, it's not a Grecian uh, type of uh, language. So, unfortunately, <laughs> You can't understand anything. So But there's no translation? That's a translation. That's a Hebrew translation. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so basically what he's talking about, uh, this is the basic principles, okay, of the metaphys met metaphysics, okay? Metaphysics. Uh, metaphysics. So Immanuel Kant, for people listening who don't know, he was a very famous German um, German philosopher, um, also a free Mason commander. Yes, he was. Um, yes, he was. Yes, he was, and so was Mozart was. too. Yeah, he was. He was a great. He was a great man. So was uh, Mozart to music. Uh, Immanuel Kant is to contemporaneous or classical existential philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, so for people who don't know, uh, he was a great influence on writers uh, such as uh, William Blake and the, uh, you know, uh, great um, poets like, like um, Lord Byron, for example. Um, and people like that, and and you know generations and generations of uh, authors uh, and uh, and artists and basically anyone who is basically the modern world uh, would would not uh, exist in, in its current form uh, without without the philosophy and the the teachings. Um, of uh, this man right here, Emmanuel uh, Kant. Uh, that's the way you pronounce his name. It's not a derogatory kind of term. And yeah, so it was a great, uh, great podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Richard, I know you yes. need to run and trim <laughs> your, hey. your bushes. He needs to trim his bushes. <laughs> hey, guy, before you leave, I just I want to yeah. part with this. Um, I actually, when I was in high school, um, we had a guest speaker at my high school, and he wrote a book called Night. Have you ever read it? Who is the guest speaker? Eli Wiesel. Yeah, of course I read it. I got of to meet him. Of course I read it. I met, yes, I, yes of, well, yes, I, I, I knew you did, but I got He's to meet him. He's a great man. I, I got to shake his hand. He's a hand. great man. He's, uh, he's also a Freemason. He's also a great person. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just one of the greatest, you one know, the greatest. Uh, in intellectual uh, figures uh, of our times. Yes. Um, no doubt about it. You know, such a pure uh, of heart, mm -hmm. pure of mind, you know, his uh, entrepreneurial and uh, humanitarian and um, you know uh, just just the work that uh, speaks uh, for for uh, himself yeah yeah for generations and uh, he will not be he will not be uh, forgotten uh, I don't know if uh, I'm not sure about uh, Ellie Wiesel if he he was a Freemason but I think I heard that that he was um not it's not a conspiracy theory no, you know, no, no, people, no, no. 
people who are conspiracy. So conspiracy furious, please get off the. the <laughs> no, yeah. hey, hey, the listen, tape. hey guys, we Go. get we. The Freemasons, we Go get that all the candy time. Crush. Go hey, one of candy one of crush. Andrew's best friends is a uh, conspiracy theorist. Oh yeah. oh yeah, he thinks the world is flat. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Well, that's pretty mild, you know. Well, <laughs> conspiracy. Not for me. Know, yeah. <laughs> Come here, hon. Say say hi to guy. Guy, this is my he, wife. He's in Israel. He's in, he's in Israel right now. Hey, how are you? Did you know is, your husband? Your your husband is called Commandru from now on. Commandru, he calls Commander him Andrew. Commandru. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I gotta go eat, and he's gonna I'm do his bushes, to... and you've gotta get some sleep, well, <laughs> Professor. I, yeah. I hope I, I I did not break off your marriage uh, right there, but no, uh, no, 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 we're good. She, she, I, I have to die before like yeah. we're broken up. So it's okay. It's good. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, my, all right. my guy, written thank written you so book. much, yeah. man. Thank you. If thank you're you. on, uh, if you're on social media, look us up and send us a friend request. Yeah, please yeah. do. Of course. Of course I will. Uh, uh, I'll, immediately I'll after. All right. Of course. I'll send you an email with, you know, detailed, you know, intricate, uh, yeah. Details of my recipe, you know, yeah. ways give you a and methods pages. of uh, preparation. Yeah, yeah, a couple of pages are in the ballpark. A couple of pages, you know, a few, a few hundred words, but uh, yeah. nothing too fancy. Nothing too fancy. <laughs> no, oh, nothing too good. fancy. I'm not a chef. Like I'm not a great, you know, accomplished uh, chef, uh, such as yourself, uh, Commander or Rich, Richard, who has. <laughs> Drafted, drafted, uh, dude, seriously, uh, dude, that book. nickname, hey. that, that nickname's going in the book, man. Commandru. Yeah, Commandru, go for it, you know, go 100%, you know. I love Never it. Never look back, never look back. Hey, the boss is waiting for you behind hey, you. Hey, I know. Guys, guns are going out. Yep. Shalom, yeah. brother. Shalom, buddy. Bye, shalom. Take care. Bye. Thank you.